Dark times are upon us, my child. But do not mourn. Instead, set your teeth to the killer's grin. For darkness is a friend to those who know the shadows, and none know the shadows better than we. Today we're talking about the Ajaba. The Ajaba are the were hyenas, and they are the... How do we put it? They are the bonars of the rest of the pharaoh. They're scavengers. The Ajaba and their numbers are greatly dwindled and diminished from what they were before. The Ajaba were vital in keeping the strong and all the traits that you wanted to have uh, in your bloodline. They were the ones that continued that moving forward. They killed the weak, they hunted the sick, and they kept that weakness out of their, uh, out of their lineage. They were very, very important to the microcosm that is Africa when it comes to the pharaoh and the tribes that were uh, that were there at the time. The Ajaba suffered a great cull. The Bastet, or the Simba of the Bastet specifically, they're a sub-tribe of the Bastet who are basically were lions. There was one particular individual whose name is Blacktooth and he was just, in a word, awful. He was a vicious, vicious tyrant, and he subjugated much of the Simba themselves through his, uh, through his power and his warmongering and his bloodlust. What ended up happening is there was a massive drought at some point in Africa's history. The Simba, they blamed this drought on the Ajaba. Part of what brought this animosity between the Ajaba and the Simba was the were hyenas, the Ajaba, were also known as the rainmakers, and they were the ones who were responsible for making the rains come. So when the great drought happened and the rains did not come, the Simba were, I was gonna say understandably upset, but it's not understandably, but they were upset, and they did blame the Ajaba for the drought. And so they used them as a scapegoat basically for all of their problems, and thus began a great war and a cull of the Ajaba. After many great battles were lost and many of the Ajaba numbers had dwindled or were suffering, the king at the time, Ajua Ka, he called all the Ajaba together. He gathered all of the Ajaba to the Ngorongoro crater. The plan was to have a final stand or a big showdown. The problem was that the Simba had anticipated this and found out uh, they found out about these plans and they laid a trap for the Ajaba. Many of them died that day. This was kind of a breaking point for the Ajaba tribe and many of their numbers dissipated. They went everywhere basically. They got out of Africa. Some stayed in Africa and still have dreams of taking back some of their ancestral homelands. Many went to North America, they went to Europe, they went to Asia and they scattered. The ones that scattered, especially to North America, they ran into much of the Guru tribe. That led to lots more skirmishes between the Ajaba and the Guru, because the Ajaba are trying to carve out a little piece of land for themselves, and the Guru, well, they weren't having any of that because they're also infighting with their own tribes for their own territory. The Ajaba tribe of today is also quite matriarchal, which means females lead. I won't say this is 100% the case for the clans, but, you know, chicks rule. The Ajaba who went to Asia, they ran into the beast courts. This was quite a foreign concept to them because in their history and in their experience, Pharaoh did not work together. But the, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, but the Hakano Kai? Hengio K? I think that's how... Oh. Spelling is right here. It's really weird. Anyways, the willingness for the different tribes to work under this system of the beast courts was a completely foreign concept to them, but they have been going along with it simply because they don't want to they don't want to rock the boat. The beast courts are really interesting. I will cover them as well in a different video. Some of the pharaoh have weaknesses called Yava. The Bastet have some, for example. Each tribe of the Bastet has some. What a Yava is, is a very closely guarded secret for the tribe as a whole. For example, one of the Yava that was discovered by the Simba and was definitely used against them in combat, the Ajaba, all of them, 
have a quarter-sized nick in the back of their skull somewhere. And if you hit this point, uh, their brain basically explodes. Another weakness of theirs is if a, a Jabba leaves a footprint in anything, dirt, mud, snow, sand, and somebody pours white wine into that footprint or any kind of alcohol that stronger the alcohol, the longer the effect will last, that Ajaba that left that track becomes intoxicated. Pretty big downsides if you have your Yava discovered, which is what happened in the case of, uh, in the case of the Ajaba. When it comes to the Ajaba, they have five forms that they can take. They have their Homid form, their Anthros form, their Krinos form, their Crocus form, and finally their Hyenid form. They also have something similar to what the werewolves would call their auspice. They have something called an aspect, and there are three of them. There is dawn, midnight, and dusk. I like the history of the Ajaba. I think they're an interesting choice for the Pharah. I think they would be fairly easy to integrate into a werewolf-heavy tribe or a werewolf-heavy game if you were wanting to do something like that. Plus, they come with a whole slew of their own gifts and rights and special abilities as well. When it comes to stepping sideways and moving into the Umbra or the spirit world, the werewolves are the ones tend to have a superior reign on that. So when you're looking at different Pharah, make sure that that's something that's in the back of your mind, that they might not be able to cross into the spirit realm. And in the Ajaba's case, I believe that that would also be correct, that they uh, they do not traverse the Umbra. Now, there are a couple of gifts you can take as a werewolf that would allow you to take someone across. There's nothing saying that you can't do that with an Ajava. That would be a little bit of a mind-blowing event for them. Keep, keep that in mind. If you want to take a look up here, I will have a playlist of the other werewolf tribes that I have done, and we'll cover off the lore. Uh, we'll cover off the lore for them. And uh, up here, you will find a video that YouTube has picked for you. If you enjoyed today's video, love to have you hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that like button if you found it useful or informative today. Tell me below in the comments if you've played in Ajaba and what that was like for you. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.